we can uh, we can start. Um, so, Kelly, did you want to start us off now? Um, I think we're good to go now with a quorum. Sure. Um, so thanks everybody for coming on tonight. Um, um, as you know, um, Harriet has passed away sadly. Um, so um, in the so in the interim, um, I've been asked to step up and uh, run the meetings, um, and I'm very sorry to hear of her loss. So it's been a lot of losses the last couple months um for the boards that she has sat on so sorry to hear that um yes, if i can ask i didn't know this um gosh maybe four or five weeks now that's so sad yeah and then you was knew she the uh, woman that they had the uh was she the woman that they had the uh yeah uh, morning bunting on the hot city hall yes yeah i'm not i'm sure what they call that but Notice that going by. Like a dream. Yep. Very sad. Yeah. And Barbara yeah. Long passed away last summer, as you guys know. They both sat on this committee and then the um one of Hamilton Improvement Society or one of them Improvement Society. So um be those May, she was on for a long time and you know, we'll continue to run it with her spirit in mind. Um so there's a two so we need to do a couple things. One is that there's a couple applicants. Um, so we'll go through that and then the meeting minutes from before. Um, so can you pull up the meeting minutes, please? Yeah. So, so the for the two people that are on the call, um, what happens, the process is, is that um, we'll review the application prior to this. We should have all reviewed the application. If not, we'll do that quickly. And then you are allowed to chime in and give your position about, or, and then we can ask questions and then we move to a vote. And then once the vote is um, a yay or a nay, or if we ask for additional documentation, then, sorry, is, is somebody else to keep talking or is it mine? Uh, someone is echoing. Uh, can everyone please, um, if you're not speaking, just um, especially the uh, guests, please mute your microphones. Thank you. Um, so once, okay, whoever is 978-880-9697, can you please mute? Or Joe, can you mute them? Yeah, I think yeah. I just did. Thank yeah. you. Um, so once the committee decides yay or nay, or sometimes we ask for additional information just for clarity um, or to make sure that the plans um, meet the spec requirements, um, then we, if, if we give it a go, then the town turns around a certificate for you to proceed with your, um, with your request. Is that pretty clear to everybody? Sorry, Kelly, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't, it's up to you, but I, on the agenda, I just, I don't know if you want to just to quickly ask for public comment, if there is any, and also before the applications, I think there was going to be a official vote on the reorganization of the, you know, temporary chair, chairperson. Okay. Can you just put the whole agenda all the way up? Yep. I can only see the top of it, please. Yeah, I'm not saying, I can't scroll up. No, he can, only Joe has control of it. Okay. So, so as Joe said, sorry, I, I'm not familiar with, I always forget the sequence. So um, typically we um, ask if there's any public comments um, It more applies to if there's a major change. Um, is there anybody here on the Zoom call that has reviewed the applicant's um, request and has any comments or questions about it? No. Okay. All right, so if nobody has any questions, um, we are then going, let's do, if you don't mind, do the minutes at the end. Is that all right, Joe? Absolutely, and were you gonna, um, so I, I assume there's no public comment. I just wanna make sure we're not. No, no public comment. Okay, and uh, were you gonna vote as well now for the chair person? Um, yes, yeah, so um, 
as I said prior, given Harriet's passing, um, the town, Joe and uh, came and spoke with me and I think a few others um, to see if we could serve as interim. Um, president. I do have a comment. Is it regarding the? I, I, I was wondering if the um, fence and gate are going to be re replaced uh, as is. And so John, we're right now we're just reviewing right now we're going to try to approve um, me um, as the acting president for the interim until the votes uh, until the town votes again. We're not on the um, on the applicants request yet. So back to um, we need, as you know, four to vote. Um, I would serve as interim president from now until when people, when the new, we had to vote again in all this. Um, and there might be more applicants that come in between now and when we had to vote. The vote is, when is it, in June? Yeah, traditionally, um, I believe uh, June 30th is when there'll be a reorganization. Um, there are some, I believe, vacancies on the commission. Um, it looks like Mary McDonald's expires June 30th, Lisa's and Mary Wood. So if you are interested, um, you can actually send an email to Michelle McGovern, whether you're interested or not, we hope you are interested, um, but she, we are uh, feeling those emails now and um, just as soon as you can. Um, I have to check with Michelle, but I think there is a deadline. Um, it's, you still got a little bit of time, but I would just send her an email if you are interested so you can be reappointed for, I believe it's a three-year term and that would start on uh, July 1. So if you could just send an email to that effect. I'm Remind sorry. So, thanks. I'm sorry, what was that, Mary? Oh, if you could send an email to that effect, just telling yep. us. Sure. Okay, thank sure. you. No problem. But yeah, for this to uh, answer Kelly's other common question, um, obviously with uh, Harriet's unfortunate passing, we do need an interim uh, chairperson in the interim, uh, you know, up until June 30th. So that's what this uh, vote would be for tonight. So can I make a motion to appoint Kelly Schmidt as interim chair, of the historic district commission? I second it. Yep, so there's any further discussion. If not, there can be a roll call vote. Do I vote for myself, Joe? Yes, you can. Yes, you oh, can. Yep. I vote for Kelly. I vote for Kelly. Did you get my vote? I vote for Kelly. Thanks, Mary. I vote for myself. Kirsten Alexander, I for Kelly. I vote for Kelly. Perfect. Okay. I think that's unanimous. Okay. Thanks, all. Okay. Uh, Kelly, I did have Diane on the um, the first as the first applicant. She is running a minute or two late. She will be here <laughs> soon. But if you would prefer, we can move on to our second one, which is. Uh, Michael Gillis's, if that's okay with the commission. Sure. Okay. So let me just uh, scroll well, down that. here. Um, we'll pass the minutes for now. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, Mike, whenever uh, you're ready, you can, if you want to give a brief introduction before the committee uh, commission considers your application. You're muted, Mike, still, or we can't hear you. Mike, we still can't hear you. Um, I have a comment. I would like to see a, a um, more complete sketch of uh, what they are proposing. And, um, I'd like to see it to scale a possible quarter inch per foot. Uh, on the side view, I really can't tell 
how they're proposing to put the trim on and fill in the um, where the where you see those vertical bars. Um, I think we just need more. I need more detail before I can really uh, judge what they're doing. <clears throat> Are you there, uh, Mike? I agree with Don and thought the same thing when I saw the pictures. So, and is, is the railing, what is the railing going to be made of? So, it's, and then it says teak or composite. There's a big difference. Yeah. Mike, um, if you can hear us, can you turn your camera back on, please? On, um, we see you as Glido Cell. Oh, there he is. Are you there, Mike? There you are. Thank you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. I can't see him. Oh, maybe I can see him. Um, Mike, why don't you, why don't you go out and then come back in? Like you can leave Zoom and then come back in and um, we'll still be here. <laughs> um, oh, there he is. You there, Mike? Um, can also move on to Diane. Can you, can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Now we can hear you, yes. yes. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. What the frick? So did you hear um, Don and uh, the questions from the committee? Mike? I don't know, see him. <laughs> I don't think he has his microphone on. I don't think he's there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he disappeared again. All right, oh. Diane, we're going to switch over to you. <laughs> we'll take a pause. I think you're also muted, uh, Diane, if you want to stop mute here. Yeah. There Sorry, it it's hard to function from vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just pull Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, Diane. There we go. Um, so I've never come before the CPC. So tell me, do you ask me questions or do you want me to speak? So Diane, the way that this works is um, you can present what you'd like to achieve with your certificate for appropriateness. Um, then the committee will ask some questions, if any. Um, sometimes if there has to be any change. Is that, is that any better? That is better. Um, Mike, we've just flipped now to Diane. So just give us a moment and we'll go through Diane's application first and then- we'll Sure, I'll wait, you. yep. Okay. So Diane, then um, after the committee asks questions, um, if there's any modifications that need to be changed to your application, then we ask you to do that. If not, um, the committee then votes on your application, yay or nay, if it's a yay, um, then you're approved to go ahead and do the modifications that you have suggested. And the town will send you a certificate saying we've approved these um, changes. So with that said, why don't you go ahead and tell us which. Okay. So um, I'm Diane Bucco. I'm at 73 Top Show Road. And I'm, uh, so this year we have, instead of running our own program, summer program, we have um, combined with um, the Winter Museum to offer a more formal camp program um, that'll be run by the museum, but using our facilities. And so for that reason, we've been looking at our playground area, which will be key for their um, camp program, as well as it should be updated anyway. And um, the concern we had was the fence that you can see from 1A right across from the town hall. There's a little white fence that goes from the tea house kind of yard over to Nazir's. 
um, that when I looked at it was um, sort of falling apart. Uh, one side, when you're looking at the fence, the left side and the gate were, um, you, we, couldn't, we couldn't use them. So we, believe it or not, <laughs> we just repaired that fence. I had no idea the fence guy would come that soon. But if, it, if it's not appropriate, we can undo it. He repaired the fence and the gate so that it's um, sturdy and hoping to get um, Stevie Cavanaugh to paint it on nice clean white. So that was one part of my application. And the other part was to put up a sign that denotes what the playground is. And it said the sign, I think I sent you a copy of it, um, just saying that it's owned and maintained by us and to use it at your own risk, carry in, carry out. Um, and that would go right on the fence. So um, unfortunately, this what I sent you was just the wording that we want on there. I didn't send the design because the meeting just met or the WVIS just met um, last week. And so the board would like to do it a little bit um, in green with white lettering um, and make sure we have our logo on it, our little lady in the in the circle. But that that was all I had to request from you guys and hopefully that you will think that's appropriate for the downtown area. Oh, somebody wanted, somebody suggested green, green with white lettering. Correct. Similar to, um, I don't know if you've seen it, but we did a sign on our tennis courts that also is green with white lettering. That oh, okay. just says Again, it's owned and maintained by us. Use at your own risk, et cetera, et cetera. And has our logo and our email address on it. But it's the tea house green, like that Kelly green, the historic green. I think Kirsten, I think, can also, if, if I didn't say that right, I'm sure she can correct me. Now that I know that it's going to be an attached to the fence, it would be less obtrusive if it was white. White with green with, letters. Okay. What, what do people think? Not that it's obtrusive, but you know what I mean. It would just stand out more. Well, it would just be there either way. No, the green, I think you, what you mean, what I understand you saying is that it would be, you would be, you would notice it, the sign. You more would notice it, it more, green. whereas the white would blend in with the fence. So maybe the white, stick with the white. But if people like the green better, it's not that big a deal. I think it should be consistent with the sign at the tea, at the tea house um, tennis courts. Okay. I agree. Because they're all the same. Association. Yes. And for the camp purposes, I think it should be consistent. Because they're all going to be locations for this camp. I'm recusing myself from the conversation because I am currently on the WBIS board. Um, and also just FYI, I have to go to another meeting at 630. So. Um, so we might have to then put Mike Gillis's proposal. Let's see. Well, we've got four minutes. Um, well, let's just quickly vote on this so they can get it up. So we'll why still have, we... a, I'm sorry, we'll still have a quorum, I believe, even with yeah, we will. Oh, we do. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah. So the two the two things that are or three things that need to be discussed or to to be voted on is one is the fence repairs, which are already done, which is a safety issue. So I personally am glad that they have been taken care of and um, so quickly. The second one is um, the sign itself. And then the third is the discussion around the color of the sign. Um, the sign would be either green with white, white with green with said logo. Um, so does anybody have a issue with the placement of the sign or having the sign of 24 by 24 with a logo on it. I'm just asking for clarification. It will be placed on the fence, right? Correct. That is correct. Okay. Um, now to the matter of color. Um, besides Mimi, does anybody else have a, a Mary? Um, does anybody else have an opinion of the color? I think the uh, color is appropriate. 
I have a little a bit of a problem with the first two sentences indented and then the next two are not. Um, perhaps they could all line up on the left. Does anybody else uh, agree with that or? I, no, just, I like it the way it is. It's I'm, all centered in the middle of this of the um of the actual sign that's pretty standard way signs are done to be in the center. I think it's spaced correctly. Um, uh, Diane, is there any other, so regards to the color choices here, um, with the Wadham Improvement Village Improvement Society, um, is your branding typically green with white? Or are there other spaces where your signs are? I just, I, I personally feel that it should be consistent with the other signs that we've hung, um, that you guys have hung. And um, I didn't know if there is a guideline around that. So since it's, um, no, not really. I think it's always been white and green and green and white. We're just doing up some new letterhead. Of course that's white with green lettering. Um, the board seemed to like the green better because of feedback we got from the uh, master plan meetings in a box that people didn't even know that playground existed or that it was there. So they, they liked the green being WBIS green um, and it's a little bit more noticeable. Right. So people would almost see it more. But I think the board could go either way and I'm happy to kind of try to get the sign guy to make up a couple different ones and send them over to you guys if that's better. That's kind of a waste of time and money. Okay, all right. Um, Mary, do you have an objection with keeping no. the board's if, wishes? And if the you want it to be uniform with the tennis courts, then do the green with the white lettering. I, you know, as long as it stands out and people see it. Yep. Yep. That would be great. Okay. So, with that said, um, it sounds like everybody's in agreement with being consistent with a green background white lettering um, for this particular sign for the tea house playground um, to be placed on the fence and the fence itself has been repa repaired so um, does anybody else have any other comments do we have to vote on the fact that the fence has already been repaired and to say that's okay or do they have to i would vote First, um, repairing the fence and saying it's. A, <laughs> I don't really want to undo what's already been paid for. No, we don't want to undo it. No. And then, second of all, approve. It's a sign, so I know how Carrie was about her signs. So, just approving the sign itself and where it's going and the color, I think. So, so if I if I could just say one thing about the fence, um, we had actually thought. So I brought it to you guys, but then there was a discussion on whether. If it's a repair of exact same same wood, et cetera, et cetera, then it didn't actually need to be approved by you. But I I sent it to you, assuming that that was the better way to go. I mean, I don't know. We didn't change it. We just made it back to what it used to be. Great. So, do we have a motion to approve the repairs as they are, and to place the fence, the sign on the fence? Uh, with a green background, white coloring, white lettering, and their logo. Yes. <laughs> Do we have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Don, are you in favor? Aye. Great. So everybody is in favor. Diane, your application has been approved. Thank, thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry I was a little bit late, but enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now moving forward. Now back to Mr. Gillis. Can everybody hear me now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks. So Mr. Gillis, as I said, Diane, why don't you go over what the two um, 
application you have on the table and then um, the board will ask you questions and then mm. based on those questions we'll provide direction after that okay so my uh, my brief discussion my brief dis brief description of what I'm intending to do the previous stairs that were out front um, were rotted and uh, it got to the point where delivery people wouldn't even even walk up the stairs. I came home from uh, from uh, a day's work one day and I, I had eight or 10 boxes sitting out on my front lawn. I took a picture of it, but you can take my word for it for now. So anyway, the steps had to go. I've, I've since put up two by four across my front door and I ripped the stairs down. Uh, the previous stairs, again, that you have a picture of were just three stairs with no landing. And so it wasn't really, it wasn't really an ability to walk up and open the door. You had to walk up, grab the handle and then walk back down so you could swing the door around because it was only just three steps that went straight up. So what I'm intending to do is uh, build a little uh, stoop um, seven by 44, I think the measurement was, but I'm flexible on the dimensions both ways. The reason why I picked uh, 84, that's the width of the little bump out where my front door is now. And I was hoping to match up the stoop with the, the end of the trim. That picture that you see right now is, is uh, sort of what I'm using as a, as a guide. However, the stoop that I'm gonna build is gonna be down one step. So it's gonna be one step up, one step that I'm gonna build. So where my, where my three steps are, um, the first step is gonna stay. The second step is gonna be the level of the stoop, the wide 84 inches by whatever the distance is back to the house. And then I'm gonna have, I'm gonna replicate that last step at the top, but it's gonna be all, it's all, it's gonna be all wood. I'm not gonna use any, um, I'm not gonna use any stone that the other picture had, but I've been using that, uh, that stoop as a sort of a, a inspiration as, as I would say, but I wanna, I want to have something low so that I don't have to put railings. I didn't have railings before. I'd prefer not to have railings because that reduces access to the rest of the um, the rest of the stoop that I intend to build. It's going to be uh, uh, you know close to the ground. Those bushes that you see are gone. I cut those down. They were they were they were allowed to grow too big. I tried to trim them back, but it. It, it, I, I just kept going. So um, it's gonna be uh, all white. I'm changing the trim accent color from green to black. Um, uh, but it's gonna be, uh, you know, I've, I've used houses that are being renovated or built around me as guidelines. For instance, I'm at 179, I think it's, one, whatever the, I call it the flying house. That's sort of the house I'm using as a color scheme. They have black shutters and, you know, black accent pieces, but. Uh, Mike, I think I can pull that up too. I think I have a supplemental packet here. Oh, Mike, just so you know, and this is not my role, um, I also, you may have to file a building application. Um, I've done that. Okay, so um, by code, I believe you do need to have a rail if it's two steps no. or more. No, not if there are three. Not if there are three steps or less. And that's why he wants to keep it at three steps, right, Michael? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Three steps or less, no railing. Okay. Is that what Rich Mahoney says? That's the real estate guideline that I know. Okay. Maybe, Mahoney is the town maybe it's changed the now. I I emailed him uh, two weeks ago at both the Wenham and the Hamilton address, and I never heard from him, which I was a little surprised by. Um, um, I would just call the town um, town office and 
call him again or send him an email. Well, I just thought it was strange that he didn't answer the first time. I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of projects. Email. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of projects going on in town right now, um, including what I'm pine. So maybe he's been caught up with that. I, I can't tell you. He also um, sits, he's also works for Hamilton as well, and he may work for another district. So I, you know, he doesn't report into, he doesn't report into us. Um, so you're just like everybody else out there. <laughs> no, no, I understand that. I'm just, I, I, again, I was just, I was surprised anyway. So, um, you know, as an overview, I know I'm in the historic district and I, and I, you know, this could have been considered a repair. I didn't want to do that much like the, the, um, woman before me, you know, I want to make sure, um, I'm playing by all the rules because I'm, I mean, let's face it, I'm right out on the main drag here. But my intent is to make this house more historically act. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it nice. I mean, it, 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 it's been, been uh, um, it has been maintained properly in a long, long time. There's a lot of things I discovered after I bought the house that were, you know, that I intend to fix. You know, the, the, uh, you know, it's going to be all white. It's going to have a little bit of black accent where there's been green accent. Um, but it's going to be very discreet, you know? So that's my intent is to make the house more consistent with the other houses in the neighborhood. You know, every house around me is, is beautiful except mine. <laughs> so I'm trying to do something about it. Michael, you said that the, the, um, top is going to be teak or composite there's a big difference between the two so um the di the difficulty with uh it it's not going to be teak if it's going to be anything i did some more research i went to some teak is impossible to find that i where i've looked and maintain right um but i'm looking for some guidance on that i would rather go i think i'd rather go to um with composite just because it comes in a nice gray color, which would go with the white and black. Whereas uh, I'm, the other option I have, I have about half as much mahogany as I need. I probably have enough mahogany to do the front steps, <clears throat> but not enough to cover the entire deck of the stoop. So I would have to find more, but then that's gonna be like a wood color, which, you know, I, I wanna, match the wood stain to my front door. My front door now is painted. I'm gonna strip that and return it to its original color. And then I intend to change the color of the mahogany to you know, get closer to the door so that I can, you know, I, I wanna have as few changes in color as I can. But if I have to go, if I can go composite, I think that's the way I can go just because it's easier to find and maintain. And it, they make it now where it doesn't get hot. The front of my house is the south side. So I'm worried most about heat on the steps. Um, so a composite would, would work better. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I, I certainly am sensitive to the historical accuracy of composite decking, but... Um, if I could use the composite, I think that's the way I'd rather go, just because I know I can get it. Whereas I don't know I can get all the mahogany I need to match. Does that make sense? Right. The mahogany is also a maintenance nightmare, I would think. It's a lot more maintenance, but yeah. you know, uh, yeah, if I can use composite, I would like to put it that way. So I've been just to just having owned a house also, um, or own a house on Main Street as well, um, and sat before the board. Um, composite was not allowed to be used when I proposed to replace our deck. Nothing could be composite. I don't know what other people's steps are along the street. I know that we did not allow a plastic fence in the front, but we allowed them to put it down the side where it wasn't as visible. I, I am also putting in a fence. I hopefully that made the agenda. I talked to Joe about that last week. Um, 
uh, but I am, it's a wooden fence, a wall pole woodwork. Again, it's the exact same fence that's in front of, uh, uh, I sent the pictures of the house that I, I'm basically, I hate to say it, but I'm copying, mm -hmm. but it's gonna mm -hmm. be a 30 inch to 34 inch scallop edge, uh, five panel, uh, at the front of the house and then <clears throat> is it this uh, one Nick? the uh you see this one here? um can we see the uh, photograph again i wanted to point out something yeah you see from the bottom of the um, brass strip that's on the storm door from the yeah. bottom of that going down to the first step, that is a different height than the other three steps. And they really need to be all the same height. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. I'm, I'm intent, that's one of the things I need to remedy. It's, it's like um, two short steps and one tall step. Um, that's the reason, one of the reasons why the, well, not the reason, the reason why the steps, I, you know, if you step on one, if you step on the left edge, the uh, as over tea kettle. So the steps should be uh, seven and a seven and a half, and not eight inches. A much more comfortable stairway uh, dimension. Uh, I would, um, I would uh, like to meet with you and go over the details. It's it's hard to get into uh, it on right now, and um, if you want to, I would be glad to give you some some suggestions about uh, how to trim it out. and uh, And I agree with you about the um, the composite. That that's really the way to go to, today. Um, no one likes to see boards rot, rotted away after a few years. So um, if you want, you can contact me and I'll be glad to come over and uh, give you some suggestions. I, I'd appreciate that. That would be great. Um, I, I am, I'm all ears. Uh, I, I, I know what I want to do. I guess I didn't, I guess I didn't draw it properly, but I'm going to, I'm going to, um, there's only going to be a little bit of a little triangle of, I actually know a little square of lattice work that's going to be, that's going to show from either side. And, uh, I intend to use on the front, uh, sort of a traditional, not the, not the crosshatch, uh, lattice work, but I'm just going to do the straight, um, the straight, uh, uh, what I would call, um, what do they make fences out of? Not ash, fur. So like the old fashioned fur, but uh, again, and the, I've got like a handful of composite pieces that I'm gonna uh, paint black and make very simple lattice work for the sides of the, of, the, uh, of the stoop. And if there's any, if there's any room underneath the stairs after I trim it out, but I intend to use uh, uh, Azek for the stoop, just for durability purposes. You know, um, Azek where? Out of, I'm going to make the stoop out of Azek. That stoop and the stringers, or uh, the front step and the bottom step are going to oh, be so, Azek. So what we're looking at that. now, uh, between. The first step and then the flat board and then the second step. You're saying you're going to use ASAC for that? I'm going to use ASAC for everything. Uh, for I don't I don't think the Historic Commission likes it. That's going to be really right out there. What does everybody else think? The, uh... I, I know it's used for fascia and you know gutters and stuff, and you can't really see it, but these are going to be pretty prominent I agree they're going to be prominent but they're also going to be white same as the white everything else 
um, I'm not sure that you would know it's AZAC unless I told you. Probably not. At all. It's just a, it's a safety consideration from my perspective that I could build a stoop that I know is gonna last rather than have to worry about what I'm worried about now. You know, Welcome to the store district. <laughs> Does anybody have a Again, problem? Does I mean, anybody have a problem with having them go the width of that little entrance? Because I, I don't personally, I think it would look nice. Thank you. <laughs> Does anybody else have that problem? I don't. You're talking about the, I think uh, it would actually look nicer than it does now because these are kind, kind of whingy. You guys know, are, you know whose you, house this is, right? Are you talking about the house. width from uh, the trim board on the vertical oh, trim on the house, uh, the corner corner trim? Right, to the corner, it, each of the corners of that jut It out. would be from, that, from the left to right, and uh, that would be the width of the stoop is that uh, 84 that's, inches. that's 84 inches yeah i think that's what you were thinking about uh, yes. just we need a better sketch to make sure that we all approve of what you're going to do and um, like i said um, i'll volunteer to kind of walk you through uh, some suggestions about how to uh, finish it out. Okay, so my, my only concern at this point, um, I'm currently on disability. Um, I was treated for leukemia last summer and I'm getting close to the point where I'm gonna be going back to work. So my concern is just time. Like I'm home right now and I've got, you know, the month of May and maybe a little more to finish this project. And then I got to go back to work and then it's nights and weekends. I think we can give you deliverables. And as soon as you can get the deliverables turned around, then um, we can see, figure out if we can meet earlier again to get it, to get you an answer. Okay. I'm also puzzled why they didn't tell me all this up front because I've been waiting two weeks for the meeting. I could have been doing all this. They said, oh yeah, this looks good. This is what we're looking for. This so, is how, this is, I mean, um, you could have called or reached out to the board, um, but this is the process that we go through. Um, we take well, out- see, Let's see, Hall must know this. Christine must know this. I talked to Christine. I talked to Joe. I've been down to City Hall half a dozen times uh, yeah, with I'm the not drawings personally. and the pictures and the emails. And it's just so a process. Just, Everybody in the historic district goes through. It's a process. Sometimes you don't. I, under, I understand, but why don't they tell me the process? That's my point. I, I would. I could have done all this. Could have had all this. If they told me this is what you need, I would have got it. But now I'm gonna. You know what I mean? It's just. I don't know. It's frustrating. Well, I'm sorry. It's, it's, I just would say, come up. Come up with a couple of real examples that you might see, on Main Street or something that could help but also exactly what you're going to use for each of the components products. Right. So, so I can tell you that if I can, I would make the front stoop completely out of AZEC and composite decking for durability and safety purposes that it would last forever. So if I can't do that and I have to make it out of pine, you can see from the front steps there now that that's pine. And I don't know when, uh, Dana Bagnell, uh, Bagnell built the steps, but they're already, they're already like, you know, the middle stringer was gone. So uh, I don't, I don't want to do think it's either. a question of the house is a historic, it is the historic district, just like many other houses are. The, the 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 committee weighs in on the materials that are being used to keep the historic preservation. So we are saying that besides <clears throat> AZAC, please suggest an alternative material that you may want to use. It may not have the durability that you wish for, or other people that are having a similar situation, where their you know houses are period houses and they're and and pine doesn't last for 20, 30 years, but. You are in a historic district. 
um, whether your real estate agent told you that or not before you bought the house. No, no I, I, I was aware of that. Uh, no one had, no one had anything. For but me. these are, this is, this is, this is, you know, the, the committee has worked, especially Harriet has lo worked long and hard in preserving the aesthetics uh, of the houses within the historic district. And this is, you know, the committee has subsequently historically pushed back on using any type of man-made material irrespective of the longevity. I've lived on Main Street for almost 20 years and I'm actually your neighbor. So I should come and introduce myself, but- um, I, Actually, I do, I do when you were, I said, oh, I know that, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, I, is your last name McDonald? Yes. Oh, so you're the next house on the other side of Wallace. Exactly. Like five down from you. <laughs> yep. Yep. But I know those steps, Dana's never replaced them in 20 something years. Um, so, but I understand it's um, old houses are a lot of maintenance, believe me. I know very well. Um, but I think your design will be really pretty, and they make all kinds of beautiful paints now that can help preserve your wood. Uh, would it be helpful? I mean, are we saying absolutely no to the composite for the top? Or if he brings a sample that looks, you know, pretty nice, is that a possibility? Or are we saying no? I would just, I would, I would suggest that Mr. Gillis brings a sample, you know, shows you know, a sample of both of what he's proposing. Sure, I can do that. That's easy. A composite and a non-composite. I can find a piece of composite somewhere. I mean, I don't well, want to buy it. Something that you're going to use. Okay, I I have I have uh, I have a piece of mahogany now, but like I said, I don't have enough, which means that it might even if I got some, it would might be might not be the exact same. It would be a different batch. Well, it's okay. Um, every tree is different, so we understand. <laughs> I, I do have, I do have some of the. Um, I have white primed pine and Azac. I have pieces of both in my garage. Um, I have all the materials that I'm going to use to do this entire project. In my garage or in my driveway, I just haven't done anything yet because I wanted to get, um, I wanted to get the approval of of the board. So. But the ASAC um, for the top of the steps, I, I can't picture that. It, it's not the top, it's the the actual, looking at the steps right now, the step that has the orange can on top of it. The risers. Yeah, not, uh, the risers, right. And then, so if I could just, even if I could just use ASAC risers, I could live with primed pine um, because, if I do it right, it's not going to touch the ground. Although it's, you know, it's inevitable that there's going to be some moisture contact with the pine. So I'm going to, the risers out of ASAC, no one will see them. But then it would be, if you're looking at the stairs now, the stair with the orange can on top of it, I'm going to replicate that. The white at the bottom underneath the can would be ASAC. But there would be, a, there the would be. The riser will be ASAC. The riser, and then whatever. What do they call the facer, the face board of the step itself? You mean, that's the same thing. I think you're saying. The okay, same I, thing. I, I, all right. So, the the riser, and then the and then the bottom step, same thing. The riser, the middle step, the box of the stoop would all be, preferably Azac. But I mean, if if uh, if I can. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking uh, Azac stringers. I'm sorry, that's why I'm mixed up. So I could make the stringers out of Azac, but my preference would be to make the risers out of Azac too, because it's white and you know you wouldn't know it's not pine. There isn't any way to differentiate. You, you wouldn't you <laughs> wouldn't know about the risers because actually Azac can also be painted. Otherwise, it discolors. So if you yeah, paint I, it I, white, I, it I, will I, stay I intend, white. I intend to paint the the Azac white. I have the Benjamin Moore, uh, brilliant white solid stain already that uh, that I intend to paint the house with. And I'm gonna paint everything the same so that it all matches. Again, 
I, I want to <laughs> press the number of colors. So I don't want even different shades of white. Everything's going to be the same white. I've got five gallons of this stuff at like a 70 bucks a gallon. So I think it's um, the top that we're concerned with most, right? Everybody else? Because you can really see it. Yep. And then that would be the that would be the two choices would be the mahogany or the composite decking. I can bring you two samples right. and I'd be happy to meet maybe when Don comes to give me some advice on the deck itself, I could give him the samples and he could he could, you know, take them back to the to the rest of the committee and get your get your take on that. I think that would be the easiest. Or yeah, we could or you could leave them at the town hall and we could go see them. Okay, I could do that. I could do that right. pretty quick. Isn't that what we've done before? Sounds good. That sounds like a good suggestion. All right. So regarding the steps, are, are you, um, I guess the committee would like just to see a revised plan and the two types of materials and you would schedule a meeting with Mr. Bannon to meet or review um, his suggestions. So okay. why, why don't Don or you can get back to us or to Joe, if you can reach out to Joe when you um, have your plan together, you can resubmit that, the drawing um, to Joe. And once you've met with um, Don, just reach out to Joe and then we can reschedule another meeting to review. Okay, um, can we talk about the rest of this project, the fence and? Uh... Sure. Okay, so I, I think I sent a picture of the fence, um, but I have a Walpole woodworking wood white fence with a, a, scall a scallop top. Um, and it's just gonna be at the front. Um, I'm gonna have a, a trellis over the front, what you would consider the gate area. It's not gonna be a gate. I'm just gonna leave it open. It's really not the fence isn't to keep anybody out or keep anybody in. It's just uh, decorative. I, it's, my question is how many inches back from the sidewalk do I have to set it? It doesn't really matter. However far back I gotta go, I'll go. That's no big deal. And uh, I'm gonna build a little brick walkway where there's no walkway now. I'm gonna build a little walkway identical to the house, what I call the flying house with the granite block edging and uh, red brick. Um, uh, running bond, red brick. I'm not skilled enough to do the herringbone, but I can do what's called running bond uh, layout. And uh, um, again, I, I, I'm just imitating houses that are already there. You know, the house down the street has the exact same fence. I sent uh, pictures of that and the house. Joe, can you just over. bring that up, please? Do you have any pictures? Is this um, this is not the fence you're referring to, Mike? Here, the so fence I, picture. I, I yeah. sent three three pictures of the fence up the street, uh, down the street towards City Hall. It's a it's a can door. You guys, can up. everyone see this here? This fence. Here? No, we're still on the steps. That's the only thing we see right uh, now. Okay. Okay. Um, Try this here. Um, something about pen gates. Yeah, that's it. So that's the fence. Um, that's the exact fence I have. I cut it down to the exact length. As a matter of fact, I went over there and measured it. <laughs> I hate to say, one seventy-two. And it's made out of wood, right? Correct. So you would paint it? Already painted. Uh, oh, it's pre-painted. No, no, I painted it myself. Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I've really taken my time on this fence because it's it's a showpiece. It's really, that's my intent. Um, Because I this house is the house that last summer had a bunch of really amazing wildflowers on the outside of the fence, which he I'm hoping- Yeah, he's my neighbor. <laughs> he takes which I'm it. hoping to yeah. kind of, have Corliss tell me something that'll grow similar to that. Um, I'm not going to use the exact same thing. I can't be that bold, but uh, I'm going to find something that'll grow on th this side of the fence. And then behind the fence, I have uh, a handful of shrubs that I'm going to put 
sort of strategically. Um, and I'm going to have, instead of an opening like that, but the, if you see the brick walkway there, that brick walk pattern is called running bond, but mine are going to go the other way. Mine are going to go um, perpendicular to that, but the same layout. Very um, traditional. The oldest, actually, brick paver pattern, um, according to the Wikipedia's English um, English uh, history, that running bond is the oldest brick pathway pattern and the strongest. So uh, I'm gonna put a trellis over the opening, but um, I might not do that right away. That might be, uh, depends on how much time I have, but it's gonna, the fence will look like this. It's brilliant white, it's wood. It's the, uh, it's got the, the boards that keep the, that keep the spindles in place on the front and back, up and down. May, and, uh, may I say something about the trellis? Sure. I don't think there's another trellis on Main Street. And what is what do people think about the trellis? Uh, I'm sorry, the trellis being going at the opening of the gate of the fence. I'm having a little hard, and I'm just looking through his full application here. I'm having a little tar, hard time envisioning what the trellis may be. But the trellis, you know, goes, it's, it's a- Oh, over like a hoop, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm not doing a hoop though, it's gonna be flat. Oh, on the top. There's yeah, one across, there was one across the street actually at the Blue House, but it's not there anymore. It there was, yeah. I mean, I like trellises. I have no problem if it's not. But there's going to be a lot going on at this nice house, so I didn't know whether that would be a big distraction. Well, uh, I, I'm sensitive to that. That's one of the reasons why I haven't solidified the design. Is again, I want it to be. It, the the fence is going to end up being close to the house no matter what. It's only there's only 65 inches right now between the front step and the sidewalk so you know the the, uh, the trellis um i'm going to try to keep it to you know not it's not going to be very big but um uh i'm i'm sensitive to the fact that it would be you know too big i, I don't want it to be too big if it's too big i just won't build it But I would love to get some clematis or something that would climb over the top of it. Um, and, and do you have any pictures of the the said um, trellis? I have a picture of I taken a picture of what it's going to look like. Uh, of Walpole Woodworking had some examples. I'm not sure. Is there a way for me to show or get you that picture now? Or um, let me see if I can send it by email to Joe. Hang on one sec. <laughs> Um, Joe, I'm looking for his entire application. I don't seem to have it. Hold on, maybe I do. I do have a picture of the fence that I've, re that I've renovated to give you an idea. I could send that uh, via email. I'll do that right now to, whoop. Let's see here. <clears throat> so I don't, Joe. So do this you... is the, this is a picture of the fence that I've done over. Um, Hillary, you're talking about the, the application here, the cover page, and the. Yeah, I know. I've I see the application for the front steps. I'm just looking for the fence application, and then just make sure it's concurrent with all the things he wants to do. Yeah, I've got that, but where's the fence application? Um, I'm not sure there's a separate application for that. Um, so, he needs to, so Mr. Gillis, um, 
you need to also submit a revised application with the fence to be approved as well as the trellis. And I maintain that you suggest when you submit that to also include um, a picture of the trellis just so we can be clear. I think the fence that you've shown pictures of, I think is fine. Uh, I like I the fence. A, I found a picture of the trellis. I'll send that over. Maybe it's maybe it's in time. Dun, 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 dun. And then we should move on because we have one more applicant on the call. Sorry, I just I don't want these things to drag on forever and ever. All right, so I just sent um, Joe the picture of the trellis, an example. I'm I'm going to do a flat top, not an arch top, but otherwise something on this scale. Okay, <clears throat> I just have to save this real quick. Um... And my thoughts were on this trellis is that this house is, um, it doesn't look old. It, it looks like someone tried to modernize it. I mean, there's aluminum windows on the second floor, you know, there's, uh, you know, no, there's, there's no flowers, there's no fencing. There's, it's like a plain Jane kind of thing. And, uh, so there's only a few things you can do to sort of uh, bring it up to speed um, visually. Right. Can you guys see this? Or? Um, double click it, I think, Joe. We can, it's just like a little bit of a thumbnail right now. How's that? Keep going. Oh, you have to double click it because it's little. Yeah, um, I did. I don't can know you do a right good. click and open with whatever? It looks like a nice trellis. And you said this would not have a top, is that correct? It's going to be a flat top, but it won't have a roof. It's just going to be, uh, if there's anything, it's going to be um, just a few boards, like uh, similar to what's there, but just flat. I don't, I'm not going to build an archway. I'm not that skilled. So can all the members see that okay and get a somewhat of a good visual idea of what Mr. Gillis is proposing? Well, aren't we going to meet with him again so he can have a better picture of this? Because this is a lot to. He's going to present the samples. Yep. At the town hall, we'll go peak mm -hmm. and maybe he can leave a picture of a trellis there. Or Joe, you can just print that out and put it in a file for us to look at. Or send it out, yeah. Yeah, in the in the fence and and the tr actually technically I think it's an arbor. Um, it will all be made out of wood. Um, there isn't going to be any composite in that. Okay. Um, so, um, and then I also sent over a picture of the walkway two doors over. What I call what I call the flying house because they picked it up and move it as as you probably know. Yeah, um, we gave them permission to do that. Yeah. Can I ask why they did that? Why did they bother moving it? It's a personal decision, I think, based on what the developer wanted. It's prettier the way it, yeah. It's a two hundred thousand dollar house move. I mean, so aesthetically, aesthetically, it looks beautiful, but for a house that he's going to try to sell, two hundred grand, wow. So just to, so I want to just take a step back and recap for a second, um, Mr. Gillis, you've got a couple things on your proposal here. Um, the we need for you to amend um, your application, please, to include the fence. The length of the fence and height would be helpful. Uh, the trellis. Again, I would include the length and the height as well. 
um, and how far you plan to put the fence back from the walkway. I would specify the material and just paint color. Okay. Resubmit your proposal proposal to Joe, and then drop off the samples and meet with Don. Okay. All so right. I, I left anything out, guys. Okay. Is there is there a way to get guidance on how far the fence has to be off the sidewalk or anything like that? Uh, no, I mean, there's no real guideline around that. I Just keep in mind that they do sometimes plow the sidewalk in the winter with that little well, plow. So that, want to make that was one of my, that's one of my issues is that they, the, the, uh, the plow, they, they left justify the plow. So they've never plowed up my grass, but they have, if you see the front of the house, the the street side of the sidewalk has clear indentation where the plow rips up the dirt every winter. And so there's like a foot and a half into the middle of the grassy area between the curbstone and the drop in the sidewalk. There's like two separate levels. There's a there's the plow level that they hack out. And then there's the original level, which is higher. I'm wondering if you'll let me fix that so that I can you know, is there a way to fix it so that, you know, can I, can I put dirt in there and plant grass seed and make it look nice? Cause right now it's, it's certainly, it's an eyesore and it's actually kind of dangerous to have this I would, kind of I would, belly. Yeah, I would just, I mean, unfortunately all, we all sort of deal with that. Um, some people maintain their own, some people don't. I would just follow up with the trees committee or, you know, whoever is on that committee to see what what's what they do and what you're allowed to do. It's beyond what, our There's no trees there. Um, I'm just saying whatever. I mean, Joe, who's the like, is it who's in charge of like the committee that deal with anything that deals with the town for landscaping? Uh, the, I would think maybe the planning board potentially. Okay. Um, the, just the first D DPW. Yeah, it's called the, I would just say with the DPW. Yeah, okay. D D DPW. Sure. Yep, I can look into that, talk to the director. Yep. Yeah, I, again, I just want to, I just want to know what I can and can't do. I don't want to do anything I'm not supposed to do. Um, yeah, and I just, I suggest, you know, just, I would call them simply because we don't know either. Okay, that's fair enough. Right. That's fair right. enough. Do you have any other questions for us, Mr. Gillis? I'm just wondering what time frame. If I got you this stuff by the end of the week, what would be? What would be? Uh... We can talk once we go through Olivia's um, or um, application and see if she's had any questions, and then the the committee can see what availability is to hopefully get um, this turned around a decision turned around for you pretty quickly. There's just I think a lot more questions and. Um, that came up and the application um, wasn't full um, with all this detail that we needed. So uh, we'll try to do our best. I just can't tell you when. So right. we name it, we, what, typically like most disc boards meet um, once a month. We'll see if we can do an interim meeting for you. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. That would be, uh, that would be very, very helpful. Yep. Okay, well, I have my marching orders. Thank you for your time, everybody. I appreciate your consideration. And uh, any neighbors that want to stop by and introduce themselves, that would be great. Love yeah, to thanks. love to meet as many people as I can. Everyone looks, I recognize a lot of a lot of you. So I've seen you all around town, mm -hmm. but uh, I haven't met a, met a lot of people yet. I'm trying to remedy that too. <laughs> and just so, you know, while we may all be available, it's also Joe's timing and other people's, it's not just us and like the Zoom link and so forth. So it's, you know, even though we may not be, some other people that support this won't be. So it's just bear with us as we try to accommodate. That's all. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate Thanks. it. Good night. Good night. All righty. <laughs> so to the last applicant, I'm sorry that took forever. Um, 61. Yep. 61 main Yes. Hi, everybody. Olivia Shevlin. Um, just want to start off by saying 
Um, I've been on a committee with Harriet as well. So she's very missed on this. Um, just yeah. want to acknowledge that. Um, <laughs> but um, we have submitted an application for our gutter and fascia repair. Um, you'll notice in the pictures um, that there has been misalignment that has caused deterioration and rot um, that we are looking to rectify. Um, and actually, as of this storm, the past two days, um, I'll note some areas where we actually, the, the gutter and fascia has actually fallen off. So this project has been kind of a ticking time bomb. I think it resulted in um, the previous owner re removed the slate roof and um, put on another one, but the gutters were misaligned in that process. Um, and since we've moved in, we've noticed that there's been um, a lot of just the water um, into the gutters has not um, been working and um, all of the kind of rain that we've been getting, um, there, we, the runoff um, tends to go into the wood and the fascia. So we are looking to replace all of the gutters and any of the rotting fascia um, along our roof line. And Joe, if you could actually go to specifically the porch area pictures, um, the current picture that's on the screen is of our kitchen. But what I really want to show is um, the porch and this piece that, um, yeah, if you could actually go up a little, go up one photo. Um, that's been our biggest concern. And that's the piece that over the past 24 hours has actually fallen off um, due to the rot and um, misalignment of the water. So we are seeking um, just approval to go through the process of replacing all of the gutters. Um, along our house, make sure that runoff and water um, kind of dispersal is appropriate and that um, any rot that has existed um, is replaced with, with new material. Olivia? Yes. Are your gutters, um, they're wooden or are they aluminum now? So they are aluminum, except for this one piece. If you stop right here, um, there is one wood gutter that actually does not even work. It's not, a, it's just there. There's no water that goes into it. I think at some point, some kind of gutter work was done and um, there was a, a gutter that connected into this aluminum piece that was added. Um, but that's really been where we're noticing the most issues. Um, and this piece where you'll notice that it's kind of misaligned with the current fascia, that has actually just fallen down as of the past 24 hours. So oh, um, yeah, so this is kind of an urgent matter. We really want to repair and get everything aligned so that there's um, not additional water and rot um, happening. Oh, yes. um, and just from uh, <laughs> a timing, I guess, could have been more perfect or worse for all of this to happen. But um, yeah, we're, we're just seeking the approval to have the gutters um, updated and, and replaced to make sure that this does not continue. The reason I asked about aluminum is because obviously you probably want to replace them with aluminum as opposed to wood. Yes. And so this, this I think this is a good example, actually, Joe, if you don't mind stopping. So there is that one piece that we are going to remove totally that is wood. And then all of the aluminum existing um, gutters are going to be replaced with with new gutters. So they're all they're all looking exactly the same. You can actually get them with very similar lines to the old wooden gutters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can kind of see them in this image here. But um, the contracting company Lee Ghibli, who we're working with, um, has said, "Well." We'll try to match everything, but we're going to remove the wood because it's not even it's it's not doing anything, um, and that we'll have one continuous line so that water. I don't know if it's the right dis dispersal is um, is going to be effective for the house going forward. Um, and also painted white. Is that correct? Yes. Or there maybe. Yeah. No copper or anything. No. <laughs> yeah. Yep, all white. Um, Don, Mary, Mimi, anybody else have any questions for Olivia? Having done this myself, and um, I'm assuming you are going to use ASIC as opposed to um, wood for fascia and stuff, because it's the only way to go. 
Yes. I'm just having done it and ASIC, in that in that format, ASIC, you don't even know. Yeah. And then if you paint it, because it does discolor mm -hmm. after a while, you don't even know that it's not wood, but it's the yeah. only way to go in these old houses. And I have one too. I have an old house. <laughs> any other any helpful advice going through this? Other than the gutter should be, I think, conforming. I'm looking at mine now and mm -hmm. um, as much as you can to the line of the old wooden gutters. No, and that's exactly what we're hoping to do and hoping yeah. to achieve. And even right now, the, the existing gutter line was all off and skewed. So we're looking to rectify that so that it is more streamlined. It is consistent. Um, and I, I personally, it's, Joe, if you don't mind um, actually pausing on this picture of the porch, there's one gutter that kind of is very prominent. And I would love to kind of move that out of, yeah. out of the porch view a little bit too. Um, but I'm going to look to obviously the Lee Ghibli to kind of be the professional and give their professional opinion on best, best places for downspouts and things like that. Okay. So if anybody, if nobody else has any other questions, comments, or concerns, um, do we, does the board approve, uh, their application to replace the gutters with like time, like kind um, configuration painted in white. And then the fascia can be replaced with a um, AZAC material that is also white. Do I, I, I approve. Somebody second? Second. All second. in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Mr. Bannon, Don, are you in favor of approving Olivia's yes. request? Okay, great. Yes. Um, Kelly Schmidt. So Olivia, you are approved to move forward. Godspeed. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Stop dreaming <laughs> soon. It's a beautiful house. I know you are. Um, and um, yeah, these old houses are great. They're just a lot of work. <laughs> just pick away at it. Away no, at it. no, and I appreciate your time. I, um, I've been on a couple of these meetings, so I'm. Um, Thank you for the efficiency and answering any of our questions and letting us have the time today. Appreciate it. All righty. So Libby's going to hop off. Um, yep. Given the time, it's already 725. Do we want to, and now that we're going to be probably meeting again between now and the next sort of scheduled time, can we, do you want to just do the meeting notes then, Joe, and approve them? Oh, if, yeah, if the commission would like that, no problem. I can Is bring that all right with time. everybody else? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, well, let's just do that if that's okay with everybody else, just we've been on here a long time. Um, anything else, Joe, that I've missed or? Just stop, uh, there's any new business not on the agenda or just for discussion. Um, right. Other than that, you can adjourn. Mm -hmm. Okay, all righty. So um, Don, are you, so Don's in the town hall right now. Can you help him connect with Mr. Gillis? Yeah. Or how do we How do we do that? Do you mind? Yeah, I can. Uh, I think Mr. Gillis, uh, I'm actually, my office is next to the building department. So um, oh, okay. I think he's going to stop in other, uh, yeah, but I can also send an email to Mr. Gillis and set up a time for uh, Don to, to go over to meet up. Okay, that'd be super helpful. And just send an email out when you get the samples and reapplication, and then um, we can figure out a date where we can all convene again. Um, I'm just, I don't want to set anything up yet until we have every all the deliverables from um, Mr. Gillis and I'll just make sure that his application is pretty complete prior to getting everybody back on a Zoom call. I just, I, I don't want to waste 45 an hour, you know, a minute on one I agree. project. It just, it kept on going and going and, and, you know, here it was really good about let's get it done. Let's get the information in and make it. And if not, we're going to move forward to get, you know, so I just, I want to make it use of everyone's efficient time. Does that sound like a plan, Joe? Everybody yeah, sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Okay, thanks all. Enjoy, and hopefully, no one has flooding basements. And um, may the sun come out. <laughs> Sorry, just need a, a motion to adjourn from someone. Uh, I make a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Is uh, is there a second? Second. All in favor. Bye. 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 Great. Thank you.
No crime. Thank Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Kelly, you did a great job. Thanks, Thank yes. you, Kelly. You yeah. did.